Yo, we're back. We're back. Marathon minute, season two, episode two. Yeah, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yep. You know they didn't think we were gonna get past twenty. Here we are at a quarter century. That's right. And uh, twenty-four is a magic number. Willie Mays, big number uh, in my youth. Kobe. Kobe. Yep. Big number. So we're we're through that and on to twenty-five, and we're on our next quarter century after this. Yeah, here's to the next 25. Let's hope we get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, big week. A lot has happened. Yeah. Good and bad. You traveled to South Carolina with your team to play in the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah. What you is know, the U.S. Open Cup? The U.S. Open Cup is a tournament between all of the professional leagues and divisions within U.S. soccer, right. similar to the FA Cup in england um it's it's really a cool tournament in that every team professional team in the country has an opportunity to compete for the same trophy and you get to play across different divisions right. against different teams in different areas that you might not typically face um which is why we went to south carolina to play greenville uh which is actually th there may be something fishy going on not fishy I'm not accusing anyone of anything, but typically the first round of the U.S. Open Cup is regional where right. you, you play teams uh, that are close to you. And we ended up traveling, I think it was over 2,000 miles, yeah. double the farthest of any team in the country. And um, yeah, it was quite a travel day to get there. And I'll be very blunt about this topic. It's very disappointing. It's a game that I've no, we should win. Um, extremely disappointing result and disappointing still not to have a win on the season. But, you know, like I've said before, I'll sound like a broken record. I'm still very confident in our team and what our north is. Uh, the, the players that we have, I'm confident in. And it's, it's definitely a tough time, but I'm very confident we will get through it. And we have an opportunity Wednesday to get our first win. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, and kudos. I watched the game on TV. Uh, kudos to Greenville for getting the result. Uh, credit to them. But, um, you know, soccer is a cruel sport. I, I consider myself pretty knowledgeable about all sports. And I think soccer is singularly unique in that uh, the team that dominates on the field or plays better uh, or has, you know, more more opportunities to score does not always win it you i don't know if you looked at the stats i did i think your team had uh possession of the ball 71 percent of the time uh to their 29 percent. so that means you guys were you know with the ball most of the game and you had 17 shots to their nine the only thing you guys didn't do was you did not score them yeah and that's all that matters especially in tournament play when it's it's all about just a result so yeah it's very disappointing and we learn from it. We move on and we look at the next game and that's, that's all we can do. Yeah. I have another theory. You want to hear it? Uh, let's, let's hear it. And no matter what sport you play uh, in team sports, there are a certain amount, particularly over a long season, there are a certain amount of bad losses that every team will, will suffer. Um, yeah. And you got to get the bad losses out of the way. And if you're going to have some bad losses, this was a bad loss. You were the better team. Uh, and that's a team you beat more often than not, much more often than not. It's a bad loss. No, no way to put it. Um, so you're getting the bad losses out of your, out of your system, your team getting the bad losses out of their system. And hopefully your bad losses will be front loaded rather than back. Loaded. Yeah. Get them out of the way. Yeah. That's uh, okay. yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather start slow and end strong then vice versa. So let's keep that in mind and, uh, you know, keep moving forward. That's all we can do. Yeah. Um, but we are here to also talk about our guest and we've got another great guest. One of my former teammates, Aaron Malloy. Aaron is a 25 year old professional soccer player currently playing for Memphis 901 FC in the USL championship. Actually we broke. So, so, this was recorded for context. Again, this was recorded. When was it back in? It was in the off season. So yes. this was probably in early January. January. Yeah. Early January. And 
Aaron had just signed with Memphis 901 and it was not public knowledge. So he broke the news to us, which was really cool. And then the schedule came out and we ended up playing against Memphis. I was not there, unfortunately, due to my injury that we, we spoke about a few weeks ago. But this fucking guy has the audacity to bang in an unbelievable free kick against us. I mean, I was watching at home. I saw right when he stepped up to place the ball, I, I had a bad feeling about it because yeah. I, I had I had played with this guy and I've seen him do it a hundred times in practice and in games. So it was like, oh shit, here we go. I know exactly what you were saying because uh, Aaron, as a former teammate of yours in, in Portland, uh, I had the benefit of watching him play for a year. So I, I, I know Aaron's game. And when he stepped up, I'm watching on TV again. And when he steps up to take the free kick from about, what, 20, 22 or two yards out, I said, I, I've seen this guy. He, this guy is very capable of hitting a, hitting a, a banger of a shot, which is yeah. exactly what he did. Scored the first the winning goal, I guess, against you guys. Yeah. So, you know, obviously – that but was... I'll say this, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. if, if a guy is going to score a goal against your team, which puts him on my, you know, my you know, downer list, I don't like anyone who scores against the roots, but right. if, if, if I could deal with anyone scoring against the roots, it's because of Aaron Malloy, which kind of segues into our interview of him. Yeah, no, we talk about it in the podcast, but Aaron is one of my favorite teammates I've ever had. He's just a great guy, super funny. He's a character. Uh, one of the hardest working guys you'll meet. We talk about some of the stories throughout his career that just kind of illustrate what a what a workhorse this guy is and his mentality and really unbelievable story. I mean, he grew up in a really tough area of Dublin, Ireland uh, to very young parents. His dad was a professional footballer. Uh, he ended up playing a bit of pro in Ireland before coming and playing NAIA uh, in the U.S., eventually going to Penn State, becoming an All-American, getting drafted in the first round by the Timbers, having a crazy COVID season with T2, which where I met him, drops down a league to League One, balls out, MVP candidate, and now he's back in the USL, USL Championship uh, where he belongs and he's showing, you know, showing his quality, unfortunately, with the fucking goal against us. Right. But like you said, couldn't have happened to a better guy and you'll you'll hear it right away this guy's he started like first five minutes he's already like cracking jokes and you know he's just it's a it's a great conversation he's got a great story so it's a privilege to share his story yeah uh aaron malloy i maybe i said this after every every podcast but he's he's one of my favorites he's just a young uh very infectiously likable guy uh like you said from from a very tough part of, of Dublin, right? Works his way up to Penn State, makes it to the MLS, uh, plays for Portland Timbers uh, in USL Championship, and then gets knocked down a level. You know, yeah. he does not get picked up by any team at the championship level yeah. and plays a year at a lower league, which um, which is tough, right? As a professional athlete, it kind of yeah, shakes I mean, your confidence. A year after being a first round draft pick and, you know, potentially earning a spot on the first team to then dropping down a league, obviously, you know, that's not an easy hit to your ego. And this guy, all he wants to do is work and prove people wrong. And he shows exactly that in the interview and in his mentality and what you see when he plays. So it's no surprise to see him back, you know, playing at a high level. And it'll be, it'll be awesome to follow his career. We'll have to check back in with him again soon and keep an eye on him as he rises. Yeah, he's still young. What's he, 20? He's 25. 25? Yeah, he's got most of his professional soccer career ahead of him. He will be an interesting guy to watch. I suspect that um, that there are great things in store for him. Yeah. Uh, just not against your team anymore. Yeah, let's hope next time we meet, it'll be in the final. Aaron, if you're listening to this podcast, what's that? What, show a little respect, okay? I know, he was on the pod, and then maybe if I was there, it would have been, you know, I could have dissuaded him or distracted him or something, but yeah, yeah he, he come got, on, man. He got a 34 game season scored yeah. in the other games. Yeah, for real. Um, but okay, let's, let's get to the interview. A great one. Episode 25 with Aaron Malloy out of Dublin, Ireland. Yes, sir. Very cool kid. Um, you'll enjoy this one. He's, he'll put a smile on your face. He's yeah. just a happy gregarious guy. Yeah, certainly will. Loves his soccer. All right, here we go. Marathon Minute, episode 25. Let's do it. 
Boom. Boom. Okay. We forgot something that. Yeah. I have an excuse at least. I'm old. You don't. But we forgot our sponsor. You're right. Cafe Fair and Granola, the best in the game. Best in the world. I agree. I'm going out on a limb here. Best, best in the world. world. I've never had better. I've never had better either. If you want some, use the code. We got a code. Marathon Minute 10 at cafefannygranola.com, I believe. Please let me know if that doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> but yes, Cafe Fanny Granola, it keeps me fueled. It keeps Pops fueled. It keeps Marathon Minute fueled. And it'll keep you fueled too. The best in the game, local to the Bay Area, yep. always local. We're giving you the Marathon Minute guarantee. It is the best granola you will have. Wow. Or come see us. Wow. Bring it on. <laughs> wow. Okay. I feel that strongly. Okay. Let's go. Let's, Let's get go. to the episode. Yep. Brought to you by Cafe Fanny Granola. Let's go. Still, how are you? Good. Hey, you can call me Michael. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Or I can call you Mr. Malloy. <laughs> it does have a nice ring to it. Okay. I'm, I'm here. Listen, guys, I'm excited to be here. I've listened to plenty of podcasts, and it's a, it's an honor. You've guys had some powerful people on, so it's fantastic. Well, you fit the mold, bro. You, you're a powerful person too. Uh, I'll try. I'm try. When I have someone like you to look up to all season, it's oh my gosh! Come on, this major stop. Up. This is this is too much. Okay, <laughs> don't suck up to the host. Yeah, <laughs> the younger host. You can suck up to the older host. Okay, I think uh, this meeting is being recorded. Yep, that's okay. Yep, is that cool to you, Dad? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I'm cool. Um, so <clears throat> this is uh, we. We can let's not waste a ton of time because my dad, <laughs> my dad starts work at 10 our time. It's 8 30 for the mm. listener. This is our earliest pod yet. So if we're like half asleep, uh, we apologize, but no, we got our, we got our, uh, our coffee here, you know, but look, if you're half asleep and I'm half asleep, that's a full that's awake a full person. Awake. That's hey, uh, you know what? I, I, I miss the West coast coffee. It's uh it's a lot better over there than it is over here on the, on the East coast. Portland did have some good coffee. Not going to lie. Oh, yeah. not I'm a lie. former East coaster, Aaron, and I totally agree. They don't know coffee yes. in New York. They know bagels. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And they know deli. Aaron, Aaron would do a nice little French press. I'd come over sometimes. Was that before or after practice when I do that? I think or, a bit of both. Mostly yeah. after. Yeah. Mostly after. Yeah, a little bit of French press. Um, a little, a little bit of oat milk in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know it. Um, okay. Are you, are you in New York City, Brooklyn? I am in New Jersey, uh, New Jersey. probably about 45 minutes away from the city. Um, staying at my girlfriend's house here in the off-season, her and her family taking good care of me. So it's happy days. I know. I was, I was supposed to meet up with Aaron, but our, uh, our schedules didn't work out. And what, you turned your ankle or something? Yeah, bro, I was playing some pickup and I blocked the shot and I kind of blocked out my big toe and just sprained my ankle like pretty bad. So trying to recover, getting back into it. Are you um, still you're still it, feeling it? You're still feeling it. A little it. bit, yeah. I actually went to play pickup yesterday and I left after 10 minutes. I was like, guys, it's yeah. still bothering me a little bit. Not too much, but I didn't want to make a war. So that I did the grown up idea and left. That takes a lot of willpower. I'm not gonna lie. Like I've I've yeah. gone to off season pickup and like I've been hurting after 10 minutes and it's like, it is the hardest thing to pull yourself mm -hmm. out of that. And that was the highest level too. We had some championship guys there, some league one, Nisa guys there. So a lot of pro guys and it, it killed me leaving, but uh, I had to do what I had to do. Hey, that's a, that's a smart pro. Well, I, I did my first like <laughs> decent distance run uh, two days ago. Um, and I, cannot walk around because my cat my calves <laughs> hurt so bad like literally i'm like walking down the stairs as if i got hit by a truck and like wow. i literally just ran three miles on cement i don't know if that happens to you but like running on cement my body's so not used to it that like the calves 
Well, I bro, I, I've been training and playing on tour last year. That's basically concrete. So my body's been used. My back's been a little bit banged up. Calves have been toy. Hips have been displaced. Because this tour, if we play on at Madison, listen, the stadium's fantastic. But the yeah. tour is woeful. Yeah, story of my life. I mean, that's been like 15 years now. I have the, <laughs> the body of, I have the body of like literally his age. We, we have the same aged body. Actually, no, you probably have like the body of an 100 year old, and I there have the go. body of a 65 year old. Um, I uh, I pulled a hamstring getting off the, the uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, I, no, I, we are not the same. This man <laughs> actually like pulled a muscle getting off of the bike. <laughs> like, that's, well, that's what happens to a, a two sport college athlete, isn't that right, Michael? Exactly. I want to be alive when Max is my age. I'm I'm hoping to live to like 120, I so, so I can too. see Max when he's 65, and I can oh. tease him about all yeah, the things he did me. I will probably be in worse shape than you. Yeah, um, we're gonna struggle. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, as I was saying, my dad has work at 10, so I mean, I wasn't expecting to go crazy long, but I mean, we got a lot to talk about. Um, yes, sir. But yeah, you've you've heard the you've heard them before. It's definitely like. We're just chilling, having a conversation. Everything is editable, so... Oh, well, I, that's what I was going to say to you. I'm actually in the middle of signing with a new team in the championship right now. Um, oh. So I got... Like, wow! I, got, this was, yeah. I mean, this was, a, this was a topic of discussion. I mean... Yeah, so I wanted to bring this up, too. So, like, it's... I've got a bio clause. So I signed a two-year deal with Madison, and I got a bio clause. And two teams uh, wanted to buy the bio clause. So it was, like, super cheap. Um. So right now I'm in the middle of it. All terms and conditions have been agreed upon. I'm, I'm going to go to Memphis if things go well. Um, wow. So they, they give this me a two-year deal. News. Two yes, year sir. Deal. Like, listen, all this stuff just literally happened this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You guys are the first people to know besides my wow. close friends and families. So oh by the time the pod is out, hopefully I'm, I'm all, all announced and all that type of stuff. So, you'll be, so we'll be able to keep this in? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Let's go, man. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, man. yeah. hey, I'm, that works I'm out. so happy for you, bro. You I deserve appreciate that. Appreciate you guys. And on yes, the Thank you. Deal. Let's go. Wow. Yep. I mean, th- this was something I planned on getting into later. So actually, I was trying to or let me let me introduce you to our listeners. Um, if you don't already know who you are, I mean, you should know who Aaron Malloy is, but first round MLS draft pick from Ireland, League One MVP candidate. I think you got robbed. You should have got it. Uh, first team all league, team of the week. I don't know how many times. Multiple golosos. This guy is just making me look bad with all these golosos. Um, and rising star in the U.S. One of the best teammates I've ever had. A close friend of mine, Aaron Malloy. Welcome to the show. Um, let's. Uh, I was. I was kind of like trying to think about like how I wanted to like approach the, like your story, because I think you have an amazing story, but I think, I think a good starting point is not, I do want to go like back to, you know, your roots back to the beginning, but I also, I kind of want to start where we met. Cause I think that's kind of a, a good launching point. Um, we met playing for Timbers two and, you know, we had a rough year together, but, uh, it definitely was better having each other as teammates. We actually had a lot of great guys on that team, um, mm-hmm. fought through a lot of adversity, built a lot of character. Um, but, you know, I want to start with, I want to start with that. And I want to start with a little bit before that you are, you came from being a first round draft pick in the MLS. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about what you're, we're going to kind of jump around if that's okay. Yeah, um, that's totally fine. <clears throat> Okay, so let's start off with with when we met. You show up to Timbers preseason in what, 20, is this 2020, 2019? 2020, 2020, 2020. yep. Um, just coming off an All-American season at Penn State, and your first-round draft pick, draft pick going into preseason with um, one of the storied MLS franchises, the Portland Timbers. What was kind of your mentality, your thought process going into that. And then I know a little bit of like what happened with, you know, first team deal, international spots coming down to the second team. Um, But for the listener, can you just give a little bit of a rundown of like what happened there, getting drafted first round, what's in your head and then what kind of preceded that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Obviously I got drafted in the first round. I'm super excited. It was funny because 
when I was at the combine, I was chatting to had like six, seven, maybe eight interviews with, with different MLS teams. Um, so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, it's got to be one of those teams that showing a little bit of interest. Right. The 16 pick comes along and, and I badly needed a pee. So I ran to the bathroom <laughs> and, and I have like two laptops. So I said in America at the time, I have a laptop with my mom's side of the family. I have my girlfriend's laptop with my dad's side of the family. And for some reason, my dad his laptop was like 10 seconds ahead. So as I'm going to the bathroom, I'm just show screaming, blah, 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 the whole lot. So I run back. It was like my name, name comes up on the TV to Portland Timbers. And first of all, I was a little bit surprised, shocked. But then as I all settled in, I was just absolutely excited. Never been to Oregon, never been to Portland. Um, so as that went on, I started doing my own research about, about Portland Timbers. Um, got there for preseason that there was a lot of people there the first week or two. Um, I thought I'd done well. Um, I went on a trip to Costa Rica with the guys. Um, got, a, got a nice sunburn. Yeah, trust me, I got third degree born for the whole two <laughs> weeks. Um, but no, that was absolutely amazing, unreal experience with, with really, really good players. But first of all, they were just great guys. They really helped me um, settle in. And then five weeks five weeks went along. And, and obviously, at that point, you kind of know that yeah, their international spots are full. They've got six, seven centre midfielders and the opportunity to sign would be slim. Um, so talking to to the head coach there, which is Gio, who I had a great relationship with, told me he'd love me to stay around with the club and, and offer me a, a T2 contract. Um, and at that point, I had like fire in my belly to to be back there for the following preseason and and, and yeah. be get another opportunity, basically. So I'd done that. Um and then went on to T2. COVID happened. We were all stuck in our little bubble. And, and okay, and- I, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in. Um, because I wanna I wanna slow this down a little bit. Um, so when you, you know, when you were with them in preseason and all that kind of, what were your expectations? Were you thinking like, oh, I'm gonna I'm for sure gonna you know earn a first team spot or they're for sure gonna give me a first team contract? Um, like what were your expectations kind of going into that? Because I know Honestly, like, yeah, go ahead. No, honestly, day one, um, I, I, I was just I just wanted to go in and fill it out. And I was, I was a first round draft pick, so I thought a couple of guys may know me. Um, I showed up to the first day of preseason and Gio asked who I was and what my name was. <laughs> so I knew it was going to be an uphill battle from there. I was like, no, like I, got, I actually got to show them who I am. I got to get them to remember my name. First of all, I came in fit as fuck. Like I was the fittest I've ever been. And I'm hoping yeah. there's a, I'm, I'm, like, I'm probably the only player that was hoping for a fitness test. Yeah. So I could stand out because I'm, I'm usually decent at fitness tests. I'm the, um, I'm the same way. I'm the same. So way. I'm like, please, like, let's have a fitness test. I want to go in there. I want to be top two, top three guys in the fitness test. You guys will know my name. And now we had, I think it was the oldest team per the oldest age team in, in yeah. MLS at the time. Um, and that just happened. Um, so they, they, they said that they're going to make it really slow. Um, but to be, I knew I wasn't going to be guaranteed a contract. I knew if I go in and show them what I could do, I'd, I'd, I'd have a better chance. Um, and I stuck around for five weeks and, and gave everything I could. Um, wasn't meant to be. And, and, and that's it. I'm, I'm still working. I'm still trying to get to that point. Um, yeah. But again, just forever grateful for the opportunity that they gave me. Yeah. No, I remember, I mean, so this is, it's funny, like hearing like your, your side of it. And then like now coming in a little bit from my side, like, this was for me, my fourth and a half year with T2. So I'm essentially like the T2 fucking grandpa <laughs> at this time. And I'm like, I've at, through these years, I've seen many draft picks come in and come out very, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like a turnstile. Like a lot of guys come in thinking that they're like hot shit, going to play a ton for the first team. They get sent down in the second team or they just get like let go altogether because their expectations are blown out of the water. But I remember you, you were, you were different, Aaron, you were different. I remember you showed up. Well, one, I remember watching you train with the first team and I'm like, this kid's, this kid's fucking good. And then I remember you were training with T2 for us for a little bit. I forget if this was kind of in that in-between stage where they were trying to figure out if they can make an international spot for you or not. Um, and you were training with us and I'm like, oh, th- this kid is good enough to be on the first team. And I thought, you know, if they were able to figure out the situation contractually that you deserved a spot on the first team. Um, so from that, from the jump, you I noticed that you were different than other draft picks that I had seen come through in the past. 
um, as the T2 grandpa that I was. <laughs> um, but when you decide to sign and stay with T2, I was, I was hyped because mm-hmm. um, it's kind of funny because like beginning of that year, I really thought that we had like a stacked team, like we or compared to years past because we had like, you know, I mean, if you look back now at where some of these guys are, I mean, Marcus just balled out. You know, you could argue he should be in the MLS. He just signed with Phoenix. Carlos Anguiano mm-hmm. just signed with Phoenix a couple of days ago. Like, ballers. Uh, yeah, we got we got a bunch of ballers. Um, a lot of guys who, you know, now are still playing at high levels. But at the time, you know, I still recognize as I mean, you could tell a good player is a good player. Um, so, OK, let's talk a little bit about we signed with T2, still very hungry. Um, and then this pandemic hits literally, I mean, you didn't get a chance to play on our first game. I remember because what you were still having visa issues. Yeah. I, I was having visa issues coming in and out of um, the draft and, and all that type of stuff. My, my visa came up. I had to go home. I missed the first game against Phoenix. Um, That's why then, we lost so badly, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say the numbers, but yeah, yeah let's, like, let's not we, we didn't get three that. points. That, that yeah. was it. We didn't get three points, but yeah, like I think when I went down to, to T2, I think there was a, some some guys in the team where I really I was really drawn to because it wasn't off the field stuff. It was it was in training. It was it was you. It was Marcus. It was it was Jake. It was Aiden. That we all had this competitive desire to win at all costs. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I want to be around this guy. I want him to be my friend as much as I want to win in training. Um, yeah. Outside of training, these are the type of guys I want to surround myself with. And I think that's a huge thing as being a professional athlete is who you surround yourself with outside of football outside of soccer um so being having you guys there really really helped me going into that tough year with t2 because we didn't have the best year um as a team or even individually but we had yeah. each other and that's that's what we led with for the, for the whole year yeah i i mean i i echo that bro i think um i mean jumping ahead a little bit like when we went into those those quarantine practices and i was i'm really glad that we were all in the same, you know, hour time slot, because when we're doing fitness or doing any of the drills, I would look over and it's not like, see who's having more fun. It was like, we're trying to like win the race or like push each other or like you're yelling at me to like go faster, like catch up or, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's the kind of, that's the kind of teammate that you want. That's the kind of guy that you want to go into battle with. Um, so, you know, like I said, you're, you're one of the best teammates I've had. And I stand by that. Um, but kind of going back to, you know, beginning of that year, have some visa issues. Um, and then COVID hit, like, this is your first, I mean, we'll talk about this later, your first professional <laughs> season, <laughs> you may have played some pro in Ireland before college. Um, but what, like, what's going through your head? Like, this is my first professional season. I was drafted. I thought I was going to be on this MLS roster. I'm now in a pandemic and my roster's 15 pros and 10, you know, 16 to 18 year olds. Like, you know, what was kind of going through your head during that period? Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't try to dwell on it too much. I think the, the cards we were dealt, I just wanted to make the most of it. Um, obviously I had some visa issues. I came back. I was hoping I'd play. I think I only had a week training that week. I was, I was giving them my all so I could play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I just, it, it, for me, I, I always say it is what it is. If I can't control it. I try not to worry about it. Um, everyone is in this pandemic together. Um, so for me, I just wanted to, to make the most of it. Um, the training sessions that we have, like you said, were, we're, we're, we're different and we definitely push each other. We definitely talked a lot of shit um, near the yeah. end when we're having some, some pinging competitions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it is what it is. And, and I think we only played a handful of teams. Um, it was definitely an experience that I was not expecting, but it was an experience where I've learned a lot from. Um, off the pitch and on the pitch too, um, playing in the championship is, is a high level. And then how to conduct myself um, off the pitch too because I have so much time on my hand coming from college where you've got classes you've got this you've got that right um, so just trying to stay busy and keep my mind busy um, and staying fit was was something that um, I tried my best at in in, in those times yeah um, how, how do you feel you played that season I know there were a lot of challenges with COVID and new teammates new city uh, new league 
but how was how, how do you would judge your individual performance on, on, a, on a personal level i i, I felt as though I, I was stuck in like second or third gear i had so much more to give and so much more to prove and not to prove to anybody just to prove to myself i came off a really good year um yeah. with, with, with college um and it was just it was it wasn't great feeling at the end of the season and i know i'm jumping a little bit ahead but when i went to league one with madison um, the bigger challenge for me was I want to prove myself again that I can play at the higher level. So I got to stand out. I got to do whatever I can at this level right now to show that I'm good enough to play in the championship and maybe even a league above. But those times will come. And this year with Madison, I, I put my head down. I, I walked my socks off. Um, I got all these accolades um, and, and I'm ready to get back up to the championship and show what I'm worth. Let's go. Here we go. Let's go. I'm, I'm fired up. Um, no, but I think, I mean, kind of just going back a little bit, like that year, I mean, this year, this past year was, you know, it was, we did some pretty unbelievable things, but for me personally, it was one of the more challenging years of my life. But I think that the year previous, the past couple of years have been, you know, it's a roller coaster playing professional mm -hmm. soccer um, for people who don't, no, especially I think um, I think me and you are similar in that we we hold our we hold ourselves to a very high standard and mm -hmm. we can be our biggest critic and we want to push ourselves to get the most out of the potential that we have. You know, and I think yeah. that's that's one of the reasons why you are in the situation that you are in and you've been able to you know, elevate continually, even when you have times when you get, you know, pushed down or times when you think you're underperforming, you still are able to come back and reach that level that you know that you're capable of. And now you even want to rise higher, which, you know, I'm in a similar boat as you where I still don't feel like I have played my best, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's good to have, you know, the the wherewithal to look back and reflect and be proud of what you've done and what you've achieved and the work you've done. But I think what separates a little bit of that next like 10% is, are you satisfied with what you've done or are you looking to, you know, strive and do more and reach a higher level and set new goals? Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, I think you, you said that spot on, um, you know, what, what was Max like as a teammate? Aaron? Uh, oh gosh. No, that's why, that's why I was saying yeah, like Max was, no, honestly, Max was an unbelievable teammate. His his home in in the in Portland was fantastic. That's where we'd all get together for multiple barbecues. Um, I do remember he had some problem with a big ass tree in his backyard that he had to get that chopped down. Yeah. Um, but no, Max was Max was a great teammate. Um, he pushes every pushes every day. Um, everybody, I think, even though you are captain for only a couple of games, people looked up to you as a leader. Um myself included. Um, we definitely talked some shit in those 60, 90 minutes of training, but then after training, we were, we were still boys, um, just very competitive. And uh, yeah, I just think you are an overall great, great teammate. And it's someone that I'd like to have my team um, going forward. If, if, if I was ever having to be able to pick a team, you'd be, you'd be on that list, Max. I, I appreciate that. I, I feel the same, you know, mm -hmm. who knows, maybe, maybe we'll be teammates again sometime. Who knows? Never know. Hopefully. Also, I I wish we got to I wish we got to play cross conference more because I would love to play against you guys next year yeah. or the year after. I think um, I think you you play a couple of teams in cross conference, right? No. Yeah. Last well, year, last, year last year we had one. We played Tampa, but that was it. Um, okay. Hey, right, maybe maybe we'll get matched up. Who knows? Um, Hopefully. Yeah, I know. Okay, going back, going. Let's get back to let's get back to you here. Um, so, kind of coming off the end of that season, um, you know, you said you were a little disappointed um, with how things went. What was, you know, what was the process like um, to end up at Madison? Because I know, I mean, you're you're coming off of an All American college season. You're a first round draft pick. I think you could have been on an MLS roster. I'm confident in that. Mm -hmm. I also thought you didn't, I don't think you had the season that you're describing. I actually think you played quite well and showed well for yourself. Um, so when, you know, when I saw that you were going to Madison, I was excited for you, but I was also mm -hmm. surprised because I thought you were capable of easily staying in the championship. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what your mentality was like, 
what the process was like, and kind of what you were thinking going into that next challenge. Because I know a lot of, you know, not to go into the, into your time, but like, for me personally, like, I think my ego would have, would have struggled with going down a league, but I also Mm -hmm. know that the, the opportunity to prove yourself and to prove why you should be where you are is, you know, something that we both kind of have and that we want to prove that we want that adversity. We want to be able to overcome an obstacle. So just talk to me a little bit about your mentality going into that and like how it it shook out. Yeah, absolutely. I feel as though when I got drafted, I had the world at my feet. I had so many things going on, like so many opportunities, this and that felt on top of the world. And then fast forward a year later, where T2 is no longer. I know a free agent looking for clubs. Um, not many teams are reaching out, um, which I was actually a little bit surprised about because the year before I had a lot of championship teams um, seeing what my story was, if I was going to stay with, with, with Portland or not. Right. Um, so I, I was saying to myself, yeah, this opportunities are going to come. And it comes January, middle of January, end of January, and I still have nothing. So I'm like, okay, like, what, what's the next move? Um, do I have to go down a league to prove myself? And had a couple of teams that I had a conversations with, um, Madison being one of them. The head coach at the time, Carl Craig, was was English. Um, spoke to him on the phone. He told me that he wanted a quarterback as the number six, a ball playing number six. I said, listen, this is the place I want to be. I want to yeah. showcase my skills. He was very intense. I knew he'd push me. Um, and I told him my admirations to, to play at a higher level. Um, and he... He second that he's like, yeah, listen, if we have it for one year, then then I'm more than one more than happy. Um, go to Madison, definitely, like you said, ego hurt a little bit, bruised, but again, it was something that I had to prove to myself and prove to all the people um around the country that I, I'm I'm more than good enough to play at, at the championship level. Um, and then coming off a really, really good year, had some teams call my agent, um, all that type of stuff. And here we are in the middle of, of getting getting stuff done. Um, and hopefully by the podcast is out, it'll be announced. Uh, Memphis and championship for the 2022 season. So I'm buzzing for it. Let's go. Let's go. You think, well, I mean, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Congratulations. There's there's nobody who deserves that more. I mean, I, I, honest to God, you deserve to be playing at a high level, whether that's championship or MLS. I think you deserve to be there. So you know, I think you're back where you belong and I think you worked your ass off to get there. So I think nobody deserves that more. So let me just say that. And I'm extremely happy for you. Um, and I know you're gonna, you're gonna kill it in this next opportunity. Um, how how would you describe the difference between championship and, and, uh, league one in the USL? Um, league one is actually a lot of younger guys. So you'll have, um, as much as you have your Red Bull, uh, the Red Bull Academy there in, in Championship and, and Kansas. You still have Fort Lauderdale, Toronto, um, North Texas. It's a lot of younger guys with less experience. I feel as though Championship is is a lot of MLS guys coming down. Um, a lot of guys trying to prove themselves. I think it's a lot more physical, technical. Um, and I just overall, overall more competitive. Um, I feel as though anybody could beat anybody under the day. Um, yeah. And that's fun. Uh, that's what championships about. It's super, super exciting to watch all, all, all games across the country. Um, but yeah, for me, probably the competitiveness is, 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 is something that stands out. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, do you think that it's an issue within U.S. soccer specifically? Or like, you know, how can you go from like literally one year coming out of, the, coming out of school, you have all these championship teams interested in you. And then a year later, where I don't think your stock should have changed really. Um, because you're the same player do you think that's a U.S. issue that like you didn't have the interest that you know I think you should have had or do you think that's just like it was a weird year COVID all this you know just circumstances were the circumstances yeah honestly I think the circumstances were the circumstances I think that's just life and you come off a, a, a year where you felt personally you could have done a lot better um even for the team I feel as though with the squad that we had we should have done a lot better, win, yeah. won a lot more games. Um, and it is what it is. I feel as though when, when we finished last, not many clubs were really looking at T2 as much as they probably should have. Yeah. Um, and that that's where my ment- mentality went, where I, I have to prove if it just takes one year to prove that I can play at a higher level, then, then that's what I'm willing to do. 
Yeah. I mean, for some reason, I just like started thinking about that team and like other guys started popping up. Like we got eight in, Zem- in MLS. MLS. Jorge's yeah. signed to the first team playing for Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, Ken, former MLS. Like we, Jake was playing in Pittsburgh. Like we had a, we had a, we had a squad. Um, mm-hmm. Damn, what could have been? Okay, let's, uh, no. um, okay, let's, let's take it back a little bit. You know, I think, you know, I remember, you know, and a lot of the time that we spent together just talking a bit about, you know, you and where you come from. I think one of the reasons why I really admire you and your work ethic and what you've been able to achieve is, you know, coming from where you came from and the journey that you've been on to get where you are. Um, so, you know, you grew up in Dublin, the, the son of a former, or yeah, son of a former professional footballer, you know, could you just talk a little bit about what your, what your childhood was like? You know, I think I remember you saying you grew up in a bit of a rough neighborhood in Dublin, um, playing soccer in the streets to all hours of Mm -hmm. the night. You know, what was, (laughs) what was your, what was your childhood like in Dublin? And, you know, what was a little bit of it like growing up? Um, the son of a, of a professional footballer. Yeah, I think um, I grew up in the north in a city of Dublin, um, which it was a working class area, working class family. Um, and it was, it was looking back on it, it was tough. We, we, it, was, it was pretty tough where we, where we lived, how we lived. But at the time, it was, I wouldn't have changed absolutely anything. Um, I had a roof over my head. I got food every day. I had a soccer ball. I had sh- sh- like runners there that, May have had a hole or two, but that's what I wanted. I just want to go and kick a ball. Um, I, from as young as I can remember, I was always that kid with a soccer ball at my feet, soccer ball at the end of my bed. Um, you couldn't get me away from it. My dad kicked me out before school every single morning, rain, sleet, snow, kicking the ball against the wall, scoring goals, and then I was always that smelly kid in school because <laughs> I'd be wearing my school, I'd be wearing my school uniform half an hour before school, yeah, just playing football. Um. And yeah, no, it was, and it wasn't like there was many other people that weren't in the same situation as I was. I had so many great friends that was in the exact same position. Um, it was tough, um, but it, it, it is what it is. And we just, we, we just got on with it. Um, I think football um, just got us out of that mindset of, of where we're from. And just thinking about it, like a, I've never felt more safe in that area where I grew up. Mm-hmm. the community there it was like the projects where it was like we call it the flats where there's just houses like big huge buildings and we all live right next to each other and we would have our doors open so friends and family could come in and out um yeah. so we are really really close um there was like two ways to gain respect as a kid and that was if you played soccer you didn't even have to be good you just had to play and if you were able to fight so there's a lot of kids playing football or going to boxing clubs. And that's, that's how you kind of got respect growing up in, in the area I did. Um, but everyone played. Everyone could look after themselves physically too, yeah. um, So which, which was really nice. But yeah, my my da- mom and dad had me at a really early age. They were 16 and 17 um, years old. Um, so they were absolutely fantastic with me. They, they didn't finish high school. Um, so their biggest thing was making sure that I get an education and Looking back at it, we call it secondary school, but high school for you guys, it was, I tried to live. I didn't really like it there. Um, I wasn't the best in the, in the education system. I, I got suspended a few times, um, but my man and dad, what, they made sure. What was, that, what was that for? Was that for fighting? Um, I th- once, once was from fighting, but I was, my little sister was two years younger. I was getting bullied, so I, I just went and said hi to the bully. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, then, hey, that's, uh, a, that's a good big brother. Yeah, and then brother. like I, I'd, I'd go into Mitch sometimes, which means like I'd skip some classes and they, they, they'd find out. Um, hopefully me, me dad's not watching me. We hid that away from him for 10 years. So I'm sure he'll, <laughs> I'll get a phone call when this podcast comes out. But yeah, no, like I, I think when I graduated high school, I, I, I went on to play, to play pro when I was 18. And I was like, is this what life's about? Like I'm not earning good money. I'm still living at home. And I don't, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life or even for the next 10 years. So only then did I realize how important education really is. Um, mm-hmm. And I took a gap year. I went to this thing called a FOSS course um, where you play football every single day. You get paid, but you also have to go to class for two hours a day um, for a way to get us to, to get involved. And from there, from there. Was, I was that like, in Ireland? It was in Ireland, was yeah. So like thousands of people apply, but only pro or aspiring pro so they have trials um and 30 30 people so you'd have all these 
great professional soccer players, 30 of us training every single day, Monday to Friday, um, for two hours and then an hour break, and then we got to go to class. And if what? you don't go to class, you don't get paid. Wow. Um, That's, yeah. I've, never, I've never heard about that. Um, what, uh, mm -hmm. what was the goal of the program? Like, was it the program? Because you're still getting paid to, to play, right? Like, are you playing mm -hmm. games? Um, so there's six of those uh, first courses around Ireland, uh -huh. and there was one in Dublin. So we play games against each other. We play games against prof professional teams. So what it was, it was like a gap year for guys to come out of school that didn't know what they wanted to do next. And uh -huh. also, if you're young in Ireland, you're not going to be getting paid a lot of money. Right. Um, so these would, for, so if you come in every day, you get your full pay, you play, you go to school, um, and then you just play at a high level. And yeah. the guy who ran it in Dublin was the assistant coach for the Ireland U21 system. Um, okay. So these were guys that had all their badges. It was run by the FAI, which was the Irish um, Federation. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, and from there, I realized how important education really was. And they they put me on to, to different contacts in, in America and then um, went to Penn State. And, and again, it was it was looking back on it from me trying to leave school and high school to being uh, a Penn State alum was it's, it's, it's a surreal feeling. Um, yeah. I kind of swayed around the question a little bit, but going back to how it felt being a son of a former pro player, my dad was was absolutely fantastic with me. He was always busy, so I'll give a shout out to me, Ma. She was the one who brought me to training in the in the snow and the rain, busing everywhere. But my dad was the the guy I'd always go to for for communication and and voice, uh, because he had me at such a young age. I remember going to all the games. Um, while he was, were, while were, he was playing, right? While he was playing. While he was playing, yeah, yeah. like he played in League of Ireland for. Um, 10 years he played in the third division league one in england he played in the first division in scotland um so i got to see him play against celtic and rangers which was wow. which was unbelievable um yeah. but with, with with him um i try always get voice from him and um he just gives it to me straight there's no beating around the bush just just straight to the facts and and everything like that but i can give you a, a couple of stories where i've yes, been to games yes, please I've, I've been to games and uh I've been to games and obviously you'll have the away fans cheering for their team and obviously, but in, in Europe, they're pretty, pretty strong and, and the wording that they say. So I, I'm in the fans and they're saying all these things about me dad because where we're from, we're from the inner city, um, calling them this and that, like drug addict, alcoholic, and just to get under our skin, you know? Um, yeah. And it was, it was, and then obviously you go to the, the, the game the following week and they're saying he's the best player in the league. So, when I was such a young age, it was like, I want that. I want to be in a stadium where fans are calling my name for good or bad. Just once yeah. I call them my name, that's that's what I wanted. Um, and I remember one game specifically where it got a little bit out of hand. He was playing in Northern Ireland at the time, near the end of his career. Um, he played for Glenavon. And usually they have like a little box set up. And that's where I would sit 90% of the time for, for games. I'd go up and sit in the box. I'd be nice and cozy. get to watch my dad play. But for some reason, I wanted to sit in the the, the, the home stand. I wanted to experience the real, yeah. the just just everything. I just wanted to experience everything. Um, so at the end of the game, my dad's team won. I, I believe it was 2-1. So the away supporters jumped onto the field and ran over to where I was in the stands. because that's, I don't know if they were hooligans or what they were, but they were like throwing coins, throwing bottles, smash bottles at Jesus. all of us. And like, I'm in the middle like this so like i'm like what's going on i'm like 12 years old like oh my god getting getting bottles thrown at me at, at such a young age and it was it was an, it was it was definitely different so all of a sudden i, I feel like someone grabbed me by the neck by, by my clothes and dragged me over the railings and i'm still i don't know who it is i'm like i'm a 12 yeah. year old kid i'm gonna get this shit beat out of me right now yeah um but it was the security guards for the they knew who i was obviously from being to all the games they just dragged me like obviously protected me and I just ran into the locker room wow. I didn't didn't get not a scratch on me but it was it was definitely an experience that um that I, I'll, I'll remember forever and, and from there I stayed in the box I didn't want to go back into the stands <laughs> so, yeah no it was it was fun yeah do, do you think that there's a different and I think and this answer is obvious but I'd be curious to know your perspective the, the difference in intensity between soccer in Europe Ireland England wherever uh, and, you know, the soccer intensity fan mentality here in the States. 
Yeah, no, I do. I feel as though, like, I'm a big Man United fan. Um, if you were light blue in a certain areas of Manchester, which Vin, yeah, I know, Max, Man City is it? <laughs> Gunners. Yeah, oh, so. no, no. Stop. Arsenal, there we yeah. go. Yes. Arsenal. Thank you. Put some, res- I'm not, put some I'm, respect. I'm not going to say anything anything more. That just goes, says for itself. But, oh, yeah, I gosh. think there's, there's definitely a lack of respect in, in Europe for, for other teams. Um, like you, if you play against a team that upcoming weekend, you just so much hatred involved. Um, not only do you want them to, to lose, but you want them to suffer. And over here in, in the US, there's, there's a lot more respect. Um, you could wear your jersey pretty much anywhere around. Um, people will be nice. Um, but yeah, I think there's, there's, a, there's a big difference with, with the US fan base and, and the European fan base. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, from that story, I, I don't think that's happening at any games here. That's, that's for I sure. Right. I think there was only like 4,000 people, 5,000 people at the game yeah. too. So it wasn't makes, like those that makes it so even many better. people. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Let's, let's get back to you. My dad does have work in a little bit. So we're going to, we're, we're moving things along. Um, was soccer always your ideal? Was that always the dream? You wanted to be a professional soccer player or when you played that year, um, professionally and kind of got the experience of like, oh, this is this is what it's like. Did something change where you're like, let's let let me get an education and really see what the possibilities are out there. I mean, it's it's interesting because you came to the U.S., you got a great education, and now you're still playing professional soccer, mm-hmm. which is great. But now you also have you know the the education behind you, which you can use in the future at some point to do some also great things. But like, what was your thoughts? um in coming to the u.s was that like let me see how i like this country get a great education and see what happens next or was in the back of your head still kind of like i want to be a footballer but i'm just going to go to the u.s and see you know what can happen there yeah i think it was a bit of both i always wanted to be a professional footballer like no matter what at the end of the day that was that was my goal that was my dream that's something that i want to strive to be um but yeah playing that year pro when i when i was 18 in Ireland, i'm like got to be more to my football life than this. Um, not it wasn't shout out to Drada. I had an unbelievable year, but I just wanted more. And I remember speaking to my dad, um, and obviously he didn't have an education. He didn't have anything to fall back on. Um, he didn't. He didn't save his money from his career, and now he was out looking for a job. Um, and I was like, I, I really don't want that to happen to me. And and he helped me and guided me to to make sure that I've got something to fall back on. So we all me and my family we all looked into the idea of going to america whereas where i'm still playing at a high level and i'm still getting good training there's great facilities great people that will help me but i'm still getting an education um yeah and in in europe a young player is considered 18 19 maybe even 20 yeah. in the us a young player is 21 22 23 and I'm, I'm i'm doing the math where i'm like okay if i go to school I'll graduate at 22, 23. I'm still considered a young player and I got an education. Yeah. And um, so for me, that's where it all came from. And um, just looking through the experiences from me, man, and dad, um, playing football and, and getting an education was, was something that I really, really wanted to do. And, and they helped me and guided me to do that. Yeah. And um, what did you think of U.S. college soccer? What's that game like? Well, wait, okay, hold on. Before, okay. before we get to that, because you, you didn't just – come from Dublin or to that program to then Penn state, you, you first went to Kaiser in Fort Lauderdale Mm -hmm. in the NI, NIA, NAIA, right? NAIA. Yes, sir. And so you're coming from the flats of Dublin to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, (laughs) quite, quite different places. Um, you know, like what, (laughs) and, and you're, you know, I'm sure, you were probably the best player on that team by a long shot. I'm not trying to diss the Kaiser team by any means, but I know the player that you are, and I know the success that you had at Penn State. So what was it like coming from being a pro in Ireland to now being in NIAI in Fort Lauderdale, Florida? Like, what? <laughs> You're probably it like, was, where the hell am I? Like, what yeah, is this? No, it was fantastic. I think every one in Dublin that I knew used me as a holiday. I'm going over to see Aaron. Like, where's Aaron? Oh, he's in Fort Lauderdale. So yeah. uh, that was fantastic. No, but again, it was um, it was it was an unreal experience coming from the flats where I'm sure in a room with my brothers and sisters, um, to having my own place with my friends and 
what helped out a lot was the assistant coach. He'd done the course before me. Um, he was Irish. He grew up in the same area where I'm from. So that made things a lot easier. He actually nice. warned me. He's like, listen, like the level's not going to be as high as you're going to be expecting, but you're only going to be here for a year. So when he left the room, like, what? like I don't, only here for a year? Like, well, like, what do you mean? Like, school's usually four years long. So yeah. I didn't know anything about NEIA, D1, D2, D3. All I knew was I want to go to America and get an education. Um, so I went and I was like, okay, now I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So he kind of kicked me out in the nicest way possible from Kaiser um, to get obviously an opportunity at D1. So he was also the assistant for Reading in the PDL, which is USL League 2 right now. Yep. Um, he didn't tell me, but he had some schools like Syracuse, Villanova, Penn State to come watch me play in an Open Cup game. Nice. And in that game, it was the first and only time I got a red card. So <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that hey, all these teams were coming to see. You should have given you a heads up. I know, right? <laughs> I think uh, he said that maybe I would have like yeah. I would have played differently because I would have thought about it too much. But I I think I got a red card in the 70th minute. We went on to win the game, but Penn State stayed on like wanted to see like my character, um, how would I how I'd react. So I just went off to the pitch, waited for the game to be over. And obviously with my mindset, I missed out on 20 minutes of gameplay and 20 minutes of running. So the subs usually do 10, 15 minutes of running if you don't play. So I actually right. did the running with the subs. Because I felt as though like I felt guilty. I yeah. I also missed out on twenty minutes of, of game time. I want to. I don't want to lose out on anything. I want. I want to say it's fits possible. Uh, Penn State stayed there and watched. And the next day, um, they they made the phone call and went to the facilities there. Um, and Pretty it was nice. it was an easy choice. Yeah, Pretty it was nice. an easy choice. I <laughs> yeah. went there. And it was it was it was unbelievable. I just said to myself, it's it's almost impossible not to be a better athlete mm -hmm. player. And person, um, if I do, do not go to the school, so I, I, I got to go. Yeah, that's a that's an incredible story. I mean, the I feel like that's like a perfect embodiment of like who you are. You know, you're gonna. I'm sure you put in a great 70 minute shift. Not saying <laughs> not saying who you are is getting a red card because let's be real, I've gotten a few red cards in my day, and I think it just means that we we give a shit and mm -hmm. we're competitive. We, we throw in a nasty tackle here or there. I don't know what your red card was for. Um, hopefully, hopefully like not throwing a punch or anything. Cause that's not who you are. Well, <laughs> that maybe is who you were in, uh, in elementary school sticking up for your sister, but like, that is who you are. You know, you're, you get a red card in the 70th minute and you're going to make up for the work that you missed. You're going to, you know, show your teammates that you, you want to mend what you did. You want to be the best teammate you can be. And that's why they saw that, you know, and that's mm -hmm. why, you know, you got to go there and you had the legacy that you did there. Um, so that's, I mean, that's just incredible. Um, did, did you get to any uh, Penn State football games? American I football, did, yeah. Is. I did, yeah. I went to a couple of couple of whiteouts, um, which was absolutely unbelievable. I think at the time there was like 108,000 people there. It was, that's it was crazy. It was amazing. Yeah, it, it was hard to put into words. Um, but yeah, just like always looking back from where I came from to be in this place, sometimes I got to pinch myself um and it was yeah penn state was such a magical moment in my life a lot of americans don't understand soccer or european football <laughs> did, did you understand american football why are these guys running into yeah. the crowd did you understand honestly, how football works honestly at the time i didn't i do now my, my girlfriend's dad's a big giants fan um, so I've been to a couple of games, but at the time I, I remember watching a couple of games on tv and it was like there's so many ads it's not it's not enough like for yeah. it's not it's not like constantly playing there's so many it's like timeouts and and but when you're actually at the game and you get to experience it you just get you just, you just enjoy it that little bit more you actually get to take in these athletes and how much they they put their bodies on the line so i think it was a better experience to actually go see a live that made me want to continue watching the sport on tv afterwards yeah no, I, yeah, that's, I think that's a good perspective. Did you think about becoming the kicker for the, uh, <laughs> honestly, you would you could have been pretty good. No, I think, I think, I think Max would be, would be better than me. I think from playing with, with Max, not only was he a, an, an unreal defender, like amazing defender, but his technique and his, his skills for a center back is, is, is second to none. So I remember we've honestly, honestly, we've had some, some competitions about pinging left foot, right foot, crossbar challenge. 
and you don't usually have those competitions with with center backs but there you go there, there's max we love He's pushing the limit hey i was i played a lot of i played more center mid this year than center back so oh trust me i know i seen your glass from, <laughs> from from edge of the box i want, I want to bring that up i, I, I share it on social media so and uh, then okay you, okay <laughs> i appreciate that thank you that's very kind of you but then what is it a week maybe two weeks later you do something that's like even cooler like you i think you know i think you told me if, if i look it back up to the yourself DMs right now yeah i think if i look back in the dms i think you you said something along the lines that your next are it's coming soon so i just brought it to fruition you're trying to get i'll i'll take a, i'll take like two percent credit for that yeah you know was assist, that goal of the week in usl one yeah you got goal of the week for that I think I did, yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. Let's go. You think you did? You did. Come on. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. Um, I do have a segment that we always do to end it. Um, it's called "What Are You?" You might have heard it before. What are you eating, reading, preaching, and plugging? Um, so I think you may know some of the the topics, but what are you chefing up right now in the off season? What's your What's your eating regimen? Your diet look. I mean, I don't need to know your diet, but like what's one dish that you're either chefing up or you're getting uh, while you're in New Jersey right now? Um, I have the joy to be spending the off season with my girlfriend and her family and um, to come from like an Asian background. So her mom is an unbelievable chef, just cooks up great, great dishes. Um, there's nothing really that stands out, but obviously being a college student for the past four or five years to have homemade meals that is actually nice and warm is uh is, is absolutely fantastic so honestly just just being here in the off season just to just to have that um nothing one particular. one dish i need one dish what's all one right, dish right. not, i can't give you a dish but there's a restaurant um it's probably it's like a similar to chipotle but it's called kava i'm not sure if you have okay. it on the west coast i've i've never kava heard of is, it so kava. it's called kava it's, it's like a healthier chipotle and it's something that Right now, I'm, I'm having too much and a little bit addicted to. That, that's right. my personality. I try something too much, and then I kind of get sick of it, but try not to do it with kava. Okay. Is there much Mexican food in Ireland? Places there is, actually, yeah. There is. Really? There's, there's, a, there's a big Mexican population. There's a big Brazilian population, and, and Polish. I think a lot of people immigrate to, to Ireland, um, nice. which is fantastic. Big diversity. Um, so I get to experience different things. All right. So East Coast people try out kava. I'll try it. Let me yes, get sir. There. Um, what do you, I know you're a reader. What are you, what are you reading right now? Um, I'm currently reading Atomic Habits, um, which is, I'm probably a quarter of the way through. Um, so I can't really say much about that, but a book I read in the past year or so is probably the subtle art of not giving a fuck, yeah. which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm not sure if you've read it, but that's something mm-hmm. that I would recommend. Um, it's super informal and he courses a lot in it and just gets straight to the point and, and, he doesn't want you to hear what you want to hear. He tells you what you you have to hear. So it's 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 a great book. Yeah, um, yeah. I think we have that at the house actually. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, preaching. What is what's some words of wisdom? You know, a so, lasting message. I'm sure people can. You've already preached a lot, but if you had to, you know, sum that up into one thing, what would that? Be? This is actually pretty funny. So when I listened to your podcast with Foster um back in the <laughs> summer Listen, yes. it's actually pretty it's pretty funny so i listened to the podcast of foster in the summer um and someone that who i look up to in the mls is will trap um mm-hmm. I, I like to emulate my game off of him he's technical he's box to box number six um and foster mentioned in the podcast that will trap said something to the guys in the locker room i actually have it written down right now so i didn't forget um and it's something that really stuck with me was motivation is like the weather but discipline is like the sun so for me in the off season, it was, I'm writing all my goals down and right at the time, I'm very motivated to get all this done. But in a couple of weeks time, am I still going to have the same motivation? Probably not. But am I going to have the discipline to go and get that work done either way? Um, so that's yeah. something that I'd like to say to myself in the off season, even during season and um, to always get that work done. Yeah, no, I, I like that one. I, uh, something. Quoting Foster Langsdorff. <laughs> well, I know, no, right? No. You're quoting, <laughs> quoting. <laughs> Quoting a Foster yeah. quote, the wise sage. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he was a celebrity for our T two team. I, I've I've only had a, legend. a handful a legend. of conversations with him from playing against him in games, but he 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 came up almost almost every day at T two. Yeah, he's he is a legend in those parts. Um, family of the show, shout out Foster. Um, 
No, I do. I do love that saying. I like, I use a similar saying is, um, what is it? Action leads to motivation. So similarly, like you're not going to just wake up. You're going to wake up motivated some days. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. There's some days where you wake up fired up, but there's a lot of days where you wake up not wanting to do what you need to do. But once you Mm -hmm. start doing it, then you're going to be motivated to doing it. So a little little different, but I, you know, the same sentiment. I love that. Um, All right. Last thing. What are you plugging? All right. So I listen to a lot. I do. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, So I've got three podcasts that I want to plug one from the U S one from Ireland and one from England. So obviously the U S one is probably my number one. It's called marathon (laughs) minute. I was about about to just put that in there, but Hey, I've heard that's good. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard good things. Really. I hear they have some great guests on. The host right. are, unbelievable host are, guests. Host are, host unbelievable. Are spot. Yeah. So um, so obviously wow. yeah, absolutely fantastic. And then there's another one that's very similar to this, um, but not the same. Very um want to get to put that in there. It's called a high performance podcast. And they get um in England, they get um Premier League players, they get entrepreneurs, and similar to this, like it's obviously you're an athlete you're a ceo but what makes the athlete what makes the ceo and you just dive into who they are as a person and how how they were brought into the situation that they were in um which is absolutely fantastic and the last podcast is a podcast from a friend of mine from the inner city who also came over um that's done pretty well for himself um it's called a talk and bollocks pod- podcast i like that that's um, great so th- th- those two guys have been they, they blew up in the past year um nice. and they just talk about life they, they get a lot, lot of people on talk about mental health they talk about growing up in in a working class area the, the joys the ups and downs roller coaster um mm-hmm. so i definitely um would check that out <laughs> but yeah that they're they're the three podcasts so cool that's it that's a great plug hey aaron i got I got a question for you. I've been to Ireland, um, Dublin, and then all around. And I love your country, your home country. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. People are great. I love the pub food. Uh, I love Irish food. But uh, what would you recommend for people who came to Ireland, who went to Ireland on vacation? Uh, What Um, are the must-go-tos? All right. So there's this place called Temple Bar, and that's where all the tourists go. Do not go there. Um, you will not see an Irish person in Temple Bar um, because that's where all the, the Europeans, Americans would go to experience Irish culture, whereas it's just two or three bars, um, not many Irish people there. But yeah. I would always just find out the little gems are always the, just the little corner pubs, just the, the small little corner pubs. You go in there, you grab a point, you grab some food, you talk to the local people, they will chew the air off you with stories. And, and that's just what, what makes it um, like you have a pub on absolutely every single corner so you'll um not really i haven't really been to many places outside of dublin um just a home body in 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 there so just like little local gems away from the tourist places something that i would definitely recommend yeah that's smart you've been to the cliffs of more i haven't it's it's actually a funny story my girlfriend visited ireland a year before i met her and she's been to more places in ireland than i have i swear that's how it works that's how it works and but I've been to more places in the US than she has because obviously yeah. with football and everything. So it was crazy. She's like showing me all these pictures, like, oh, like have you been here? And I'm like, nope, I've <laughs> nope. been in this place and this place only. Yeah, that's hilarious. She'll show you around Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> she showed me around. Yeah. All right. Hey, Aaron, Aaron, pleasure, pleasure yeah. uh seeing you again. And I um yes, sir. I really enjoyed watching you play uh that T2 year and um and following your your I was following you this year because i knew you and i started mm-hmm. seeing you on twitter and whatnot as you kind of killed it in league one um so all, congratulations yeah. on a great season i'm looking forward i to really appreciate it thank you, you very much no, this, this has been an absolute blast and hopefully I, I will see you guys next year if everything everything goes to plan um so yeah thank, thank you guys so much for having me on it's been, it's, it's a pleasure it's it's an honor yeah seriously i mean i met every word that i said earlier I consider you a, a good friend, one of the best teammates I've ever had. If we ever have the chance to share a jersey, that'd be a privilege. And just share the field mm-hmm. again would also be an absolute privilege. Um, you know, thanks for sticking with us through the technical difficulties. <laughs> um, we got to get Pops here ready for his second job. This is his, you know, priority, but yeah, 
he's got another job. I don't know what it, what is it? Mediation, uh, mediation Some, something think, with yeah. law, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, my you mediation do job do. took me to Not, Dublin. Nothing now. serious. Well, I it's spent... good that you have to wear a toy and short for the podcast. No, well, yeah, he wore that for the it. pod. He's going to change <laughs> yeah. into a t-shirt after for his real work. He got dressed That's up awesome. for the pod. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate this, for real. Take care no, of that no, ankle. Awesome. Yeah, no, take, I am. Take care I of that am. ankle. I'll yes, take care sir. of my. I'll take care of my calves. You take care of your ankle, <laughs> and we'll meet. We'll meet up in the final. How about that? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, really Plan. appreciate it, guys. Okay, my pleasure. It. All right, bro. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. I'll give you a text. Okay. Have a good day, Michael. Yeah, thank you, you Aaron. Thanks. You too.